All right, Shane, next let's jump on down to Columbia where the Missouri Tigers, Shane, take, going on the road this week to face a number one team in the nation. And remember, when I told you the point spread, Shane, I thought you were going to fall out your chair because Georgia is favored by 39 points. I think that's actually come down to about 36, <laughs> but still, my goodness, that is just a, a massive, massive spread and just goes to show the challenge that the Tigers got we don't even know if Connor Basilak is going to play in this game. He exited the Vanderbilt game, did not return. And Eli Drinkowitz was asked so many times about that. He, he really got frustrated with uh, these questions <laughs> in his uh, Tuesday presser here. <laughs> but he was asked about the challenge and if there's any you know nervousness or anxiety going into Athens. Mm -hmm. And this, I thought, was the best comment that uh, I, had, I had heard all week. Yeah. So, given that, I mean, what changes in practice for, for Brady and Tyler this week, and when do you kind of, I mean, ultimately need to make that decision if it's not, if Connor's not able to go? Well, we won't know anything until we get through practice, you know, where, where Connor's at. So, I'm not I'm not really adjusting anything I do, really. I mean, those guys have both been getting reps, and, and we had a, a plan uh, that you saw unfold in front of you about how we were kind of going to orchestrate the game should something happen to Connor. So I think that plan would just stay in place. Um, so I'm not not stressed about it. Is, uh, regardless of health, is multiple quarterbacks playing on a regular basis philosophically? Is that something you prefer to avoid? Or are there advantages, disadvantages? We're going to play the best person that gives us a chance to win the game. So if we felt like multiple quarterbacks gave us a better chance to win the game, then we would do that. Uh, up until this point, that hasn't been the case. The case. Coach, this, uh, if Brady or Tyler were to play on Saturday, how ready are they to go against the number one team in the country as their first career start? Is that something you think about at all? Not really. I mean, because y'all are dealing in hypotheticals. Like we we keep asking, which is fine. That's that's the job. But we keep asking hypothetical questions. Like, let's go practice Tuesday. I'll have a lot more answers after today's practice where we're at, and we'll practice Wednesday and see where we're at, and, and then we'll find out Thursday where the entry report is, and and then we'll go. But I'm not – I mean, I got a lot of worries. Like, I got to figure out how to block uh, Jordan Davis uh, and multiple other guys on that defensive front that if I spend a lot of time worrying about what ifs, we won't find the best way to block them. Yeah, I don't know what noise you're referring to, but we have a sign in our locker room that says ignore the noise. I mean, I'm not worried about Twitter or social media or anybody's opinions outside of this room. Our opinions inside of this building are what we need to do in order to win this football game. And as a competitor, if you're not going to win, why go? So is the word to describe it, is it excitement? Is it anxiousness going into this matchup with Georgia? I'm excited as crap, man. I mean, I, I'm, I love it. I mean, I don't – was Alabama ranked number one when we played them last year? They were two. Uh, yeah, I mean, last I, I don't know. Obviously, as a head coach, I've never gone against the number one team in the country before, so that's a pretty exciting opportunity. Um, and even as assistant, I've been blessed to be a part of some really good football teams and been around some football teams. I don't know if I've gone against number one before. So, pff, you kidding me? That's what you do it for. I mean, that's – in all honesty, that was part of the reason why I left Boise State to go to NC State was to get an opportunity to test myself against the best. I guess maybe against Clemson, where they were the number one team in the country uh, when I was at NC State. But, I mean, you go test yourself against the best. Part of the reason that, that I chose to move on from Appalachian State to come to Mizzou was to play in the SEC, to coach in the SEC, which is to test yourself against the best as a competitor. Like, that's what you want. See where you're at, man. Crud. Why else would you do it? I don't want to live life in the shadows. Go out and see what we got. Take our best shot. Let the chips fall where they may. So, no, I'm not anxious about it at all. See you Saturday at noon. All right, Shane. So, hey, he talks a big game before they play the Bulldogs. But, uh, you know, I love this attitude, though, because, hell, I mean, everybody's selling them short. Everybody believes they're just going to get hammered like – They've already lost the football game, and Missouri's going to go on the road here with nothing to lose. 
And I think this is the only mentality you can have going up against the Georgia Bulldogs this season. That's it, Mike. It, nothing to lose. I think you, that's that's the attitude you got to have when you're going against the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, I mean, you're, you're sitting here in the SEC and almost a 40-point underdog. So, you know, the expectations are down. You, you struggled against Vanderbilt. Expectations are down. Your quarterback's hurt. Your expectations are down. Your coach is coming out here and he's trying to pump up and, and, and throw out that sunshine. But I'm telling you, Mike, yeah, it's, this, is, this is a tough game. And we all know that. And the only way you're going to be competitive in a game like this is just throwing out the playbook, man. You get out there, have some fun, take some chances. It may blow back in your face and most likely will. But to beat a team like Georgia, you've got – I mean, you you got to be original and you got to – you got to mix things up. You cannot go toe to toe with like a lot of. That's one thing. You when you watch some of these games that against the Bulldogs, a lot of these teams don't change their 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 identity. They come mm-hmm. in and they they try to go toe to toe with the Bulldogs. And how many how many losses do we have to see to realize that hey, we're gonna have to mix this shit up, or if not, we're gonna get killed. So. I think that's the thing. Eli is a hell of a coach. He's an el- a hell of an offensive coordinator. And we've not seen it as much this year as I think we saw it last year. So I want to see him just kind of let loose. You ain't got nothing to lose here. Everybody's expecting you to lose. Well, go out there and, and make some noise. Now let me ask you on the, on the Georgia Bulldogs, Shane, is this the week that you insert JT Daniels? If he's healthy like they say he is and 100% and all that, and because you're looking at the schedule here, I mean, you, you should cruise to Atlanta. You've already locked your spot up. And I think the only thing negative I would say about JT Daniels at this point in time is, is just his rust and, you know, his health. But if he's 100% healthy, I mean, I think this is – hell, you're a 39-point underdog. I mean, <laughs> if, if this has got to be a game, I think, that uh, if he's able to play, you got to put him in there to just kind of – to get him back it back in the rhythm of things, don't you think? Absolutely, Mike. I I, th- I think when you look at the Georgia Bulldogs, we know this is a, the best defense that's ever came out of Athens. Okay, mm-hmm. we know that it's 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 proven. These guys are tremendous. The offense doesn't have to do anything. And, and how many times we got to talk about that's the one thing that I don't like is. You know they could literally run wildcat from here on out, and they're gonna they're gonna be in the SEC championship. I, I truly they got Missouri, they got Tennessee, Charleston Southern, Georgia Tech. There is no game on this schedule that they cannot win without even having a quarterback. I'm I'm a true believer in that. But the problem is, Mike, what do you do in the SEC championship when you got a Alabama team or insert Texas A or somebody just Anybody that can move the ball. Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin. I mean, I understand that, you know, you've got a great defense, but you haven't faced teams like this yet. And and what, what happens when you do and you have to score points? So, you know, th- I think this is a good time to look in the mirror and say, okay, what do we want to accomplish? Because we have got one, two, three, four games to practice before we get to an SEC championship, four games to practice before we get to the college football playoffs. Is the team the way we want it? If it is, leave it alone. But I'm telling you, and you, I think you feel it, Mike, it's not. I, I don't think we got the right quarterback there yet, and mm-hmm. now's the time to insert the guy you went out and got and do something with it because that offense that we saw the tail end of last season, that's the offense you got to have to put points on the board against teams like Alabama. Because Alabama's going to score against you. I know this is a great defense, but Nick Saban's going to find ways to put points on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I agree with everything you just said, Shane. Uh, with Stetson be starting this weekend, and in regard to uh, JT shaking off you know, any rust, how much of a necessity is it that he's able to continue to do that in these four remaining regular season games? I think it's important for, for, for both of them to continue to develop, make good decisions. I mean, part of playing the quarterback is accuracy, decision-making, mobility. Those things are the critical factors. I mean, anybody can hand it off. We all know that. And anybody can make our run checks and decisions. Um, but it's the, it's the decisions when the ball's in your hand and you're having to make decisions where you're going with it, where you're throwing it, um, all those things that are the you know, biggest deciding factors. But, yeah, I'm pleased with where both of them are. Is Destin going to be starting again? 
like I said, I'm pleased with where both of them are, and, and I think both of them are doing a great job. Kirby, when you get ahead big in a game, what goes into the decision factor? What what factors into the decision on when to take the starters out and put some of the second string guys in? And I guess specifically with the quarterbacks this weekend, this past weekend, what was it that kept JT on the sideline? Uh, there was nothing really that that kept him. I mean, we, we every game we talk on the headphones. We have a you know two hour meeting in the morning before the game to go through how we plan to play the players, and we don't always decide that until the day of the game and how to play the players is something that every, at least every coach I know goes through. And we used to be about red shirts and how many reps guys would get and whether guys would play. And um, it's really more about situational, you know, situations decided if a guy gets hurt, who's going in, if this guy goes to right tackle, he goes to left tackle. You go through all those things. We do all those things and we talk about them. And uh, then in the game, there is another discussion of, you know, when is the game out of hand? Uh, when is it not? And, and how are we playing the game? You know, a lot of times if you're playing to run the clock out, then it's not necessarily beneficial for a guy to go in and, and, and hand the ball off or do that. And then in other games, you're trying to score. You know, you go back to whatever game it was, Carson Beck, we were throwing the ball, trying to grow him and get him better when we had the uh, the pick six. So every game I think is different. We make the decision based on what we think is best for the team.